Assalamu alaikum, Louisville. Still time for revolution. It's always time for revolution. The revolution is perpetual. The revolution cannot stop. As long as there's powerful people and corporations trying to manipulate the public and everybody else, there's a need for politics to prevent greedy, corrupt, shitty people from running roughshod over the people. FDR has said fascism is when corporatism and the government become one. So did Mussolini. That's what we got in America. It's a fascist society. It's a police state. It could be better, but 12% of us vote. So there's not enough voting. There's not enough education. There's not enough demonstrations. There's not enough protests. There's not enough people speaking out. There's not enough lobbyists, citizen lobbyists. There's not enough concerned citizens out there. There's not enough people who are civic-minded, who understand the system, who understand politics. And reform is possible through the system. Get your representatives elected, the representatives that will do a better job, and that will get reform. Start electing representatives that come out amongst the masses, out of the people, not the elites. Now think about revolution. America had a revolution in 1776, right? Took them um, seven years to fight that war, the Revolutionary War. George Washington against the British, right? Uh, that's the American Revolution, but the American Revolution, they forgot to give the right to vote and citizenship to a lot of people. So, it wasn't a freedom and democracy for everybody. But so, so that, but that was a long time ago. That's over 200 something years ago. I don't remember it. I just remember what I read in the history books. It was a long time ago. It inspired the French Revolution, which was a more dramatic revolution, more clear cut revolution. You know exactly where the people stand. It's more like an Egyptian revolution. Uh, the image of Mubarak in the cage will never leave the American psyche or the world psyche. The fact that you took the leader and you put him in a cage, that's, that's what we should have done with Bush when he uh, crashed the entire economic system. That's what should have happened when he declared war against Iraq. Um, he's a war criminal. And... I guess so would Obama be for carrying on those atrocities, carrying out those atrocities, and starting his own atrocities. I think Americans need to figure out whether or not we want to be in the empire. Does empire benefit our interest? Empire doesn't benefit my interest. Empire doesn't benefit working people's interest. And some people say a hegemony of the whole world is, is helpful for America. If America's at the helm controlling everything, then that's good for America. I disagree. I think us being the world's empire um, it doesn't differentiate us from Hitler for one you know the global empire the, a lot of the Ron Paul Republicans are worried about uh, one world government one world government will not come out of the United Nations the United Nations is effectively ineffective without the American support and the five countries in the Security Council and they voluntarily give peacekeeping troops and the United Nations there is to prevent one country from invading another country that's the purpose for the United Nations so the United Nations is uh, not going to take over anything America is the empire the one world government will fall under the American flag so some um, this is thoughts about love Emma Goldman is the person that I got a lot of thoughts about love oh yeah revolution more about revolution first before Emma Goldman so America had its revolution over 200 years ago. French had their revolution, you know, 100 and some years ago. They're out on the streets frequently, so they're still revolting. You, it's time for Americans to be Americans. American has a long tradition of being uh, rebels and rabble rousers and standing up and speaking truth to power. And it's time for Americans to be Americans again. It's time for Americans to actually embrace this culture of freedom and democracy um, and the right to speak out much more than what we do. When it comes to revolution, Egypt just had a revolution recently, 2011. January 25th, 2011 is the Egyptian revolution. And they've had three revolutions in the last century. And in 1952, they even had land reform included amongst their revolution. So that's, um, uh, that's revolution here. You know, uh, compared to America, we, we haven't seen revolution as frequently as Egypt has. We, uh, and here in Louisville, we've never seen a revolution. We haven't seen jack shit. We wasn't the original 13 colonies when it first started. We was fighting Indian wars still in the bluegrass, in the dark and bloody ground. 
So they was genociding people here in the bluegrass as the revolution was carrying on. Uh, so Louisville don't know shit about revolution. Emma Goldman, her quote is, No real social change has ever brought about without a revolution. No real social change has ever been brought about without a revolution. So I took a social movements class, and it seems like all the social movements, gay rights, women's rights, uh, civil rights, you know, any of the social movements that are out there, you could even say Tea Party if you want to consider that a movement, the eight-hour workday, and I guess the eight-hour workday movement was successful, but a lot of your major movements, say the gay rights movement, and California, it's legal, it's not illegal, it's legal, it's not illegal, in Kentucky, it's not legal, 2004, the voters voted their hatred, they voted their anti-gay homophobia in the law. So if a gay person is in a private restaurant, they have to be asked to leave. That's the law in the books in Kentucky. No different than segregation. It's straight up segregation. Discrimination based on someone's sexual orientation. It's stupid. So uh, revolution is but thought carried into action. So when a revolution happens, you can have social changes, but a lot of times social movements don't win. They don't win. Women have right to vote, but have women been liberated? Civil rights, black people have the same rights, um, you know, as white people, but uh, are they better off? Seems like it's not just a discrimination, but that there's an economic strand through all these social movements. But with the revolution, you can have uh, real social change. On rare occasions, one does hear of a miraculous case of a married couple falling in love after marriage, but on close examination be found that it is a mere adjustment to the inevitable. <laughs> One cannot be too extreme in dealing with social ills. The extreme thing is generally the true thing. Only when human sorrows are turned into a toy with glaring colors will baby people be interested, for a while at least. The people are a very fickle baby that must have new toys every day. Politics is the reflex of the business and industrial world. Prostitution, although hounded, imprisoned, and chained, is nevertheless the greatest triumph of Puritanism. Puritanism, in whatever expression, is a poisonous germ. On the surface, everything may look strong and vigorous. The poison works its way persistently until the entire fabric is doomed. Since every effort in our educational life seems to be directed toward making the child being a foreign to itself, it must ne of necessity produce an individuals foreign to one another, an everlasting antagonism with each other. Someone has said that it requires less mental effort to condemn than to think. The demand for equal rights in every vocation of life is just and fair, but after all, the most vital right is the right to love and be loved. Love, again, Emma Goldman. The demand for equal rights in every vocation of life is just and fair. But after all, the most vital right is the right to love and to be loved. The higher mental development of a woman, the less possible it is for her to meet a congenial male who will see in her not only sex, but also the human being, the friend, the comrade, and the strong individuality who cannot and ought not lose a single trait of her character. Magali, Egyptian, Nefertiti, the rose from the desert. My desert rose, my love. This reminds me of her. The person. I love her as the as the person. And I want to see her happy. I want to make her happy as best as I can. So I understand this quote by Emma Goldman. The progress of history of progress is written in the blood of men and women who have dared to espouse an unpopular cause, as for instance, the black man's right to his body or the woman's right to her soul. The individual whose vision encompasses the whole world often feels nowhere so heads in and out of touch with his surroundings as his, as in his native land. <laughs> the most unpardonable sin in society is independence of thought. They can't stand independence of thought in society. The most violent element in society is ignorance. Ignorance is very violent. Very, very violent. The motto should not be forgive one another, rather understand one another. It's not to forgive each other, but to have a greater understanding for each other. The political arena leaves no, leaves one no alternative. One must either be a dunce or a rogue. <laughs> so that's the political arena. 
Either you got to be a dunce, Mitt Romney, or a rogue, a Sarah Palin, right? You either got to speak truth to power, be a Ron Paul, or be a Santorum. Be a Dennis Kucinich, or be an Obama. Be a Ralph Nader and Jill Stein, or be um, John Kerry and uh, what's that one guy with the puffy cheeks, Mitch McConnell and... Um, I don't know his name. It's Joseph Lieberman. Joseph motherfucking Lieberman. I hate you, Joe Lieberman. Fuck you. Piece of shit. <laughs> um, so, the state is the altar of political freedom, and like the religious altar is maintained for the purpose of human sacrifice, the ultimate of, end of all revolutionary social change is to establish the sanctity of human life, the dignity of man, the right of every human being to liberty and well-being, there's no hope even that woman with her right to vote will ever purify politics. <laughs> to the indefinite, uncertain mind of the American radical, the most contradictory ideas and methods are possible. The result is a sad chaos in the radical movement, a sort of intellectual hash which has neither taste nor character. So, Emma Goldman, let's get some ideas about love. Wiki how. How to love. How do you love? What is the way to love? And I think I'll be able to finish up with that in an Oprah article, and then I'm done. And I'm done talking about love. It might take another hour, maybe. I don't know. But, um, so you got to acknowledge the breadth of love. Love isn't simply about romance. To define it so narrowly is to deprive to yourself of the beauty and the full extent of love. Love is a feeling, a drive, or emotion that we experience in association with people, pursuits, and nature. And love can be found in many places, situations, and relationships. So... Well, what I was going to say before, how to love, how to love, knowledge doesn't mean jack shit unless you're applying it. It doesn't mean anything to know about the science of how to work things or the science of politics or how to understand anything if you're not going to apply that knowledge somewhere. The idea is some knowledge, but the application of the idea is when the rubber meets the road. So, same thing with knowledge, same thing with love. How to love is the action of doing love, and the action of doing love is the part that's the most important. You can have great feelings for somebody or for a cause or for humanity, but it's when you act upon those feelings, that's when love becomes real. That's when love becomes visible. So, it says, love is expressed as an action and experienced as a feeling, yet love has an essence that resists defining in any single way. It encompasses compassion, tolerance, endurance, support, faith, determination, and more. Love reaches beyond romance and embraces us in all walks of life as we encounter one another and make choices about respecting and caring for each other. The question of how you should love is really only a question that you can answer from deep within your own heart and from your own thoughts on the matter. On the matter. However, this article will give you some food for thought by recommending some ideas on love for pondering anew. Acknowledge the breadth of love. Love isn't simply about romance. To find it so narrowly is to deprive yourself of the beauty and the full extent of love. Love is a feeling, a driver, emotion we experience in association with people, pursuits, nature. Love can be found in many places, situations, and relationships. Love is shared between people, our parents and children, siblings, spouses and partners, dates, friends, neighbors, community members, and humanity. It's found in the passion for the things you do in your life including work, hobbies, volunteering, and the like. It can be found when you're at your most creative or in the flow. Love happens when you embrace the wonderful awesomeness of life. As you acknowledge how incredible this world really is, how intricate and complex life is. Love is found in observing nature and spending time with our companion animals and in learning about other living beings in the world. Begins Beings who often show their own expression of love to those they care for. Love is at its most giving when it is altruistic, shown to a stranger we may never meet again. Love cannot be pigeonholed. It happens whenever your heart is open to receiving the beauty, wonder, and all of people, beings, and happiness, happenings around you. So love isn't about giving, but also about being open and to be willing to accept love, to be vulnerable enough to allow love to come in your life. Um, so that's uh, how to love. So, number two, learn to recognize what love is, what is love, and what is something else. That's important to know. What is real love and what isn't love. Um, 
more about love coming up. Viva la revolution, Louisville.